Hi, it's Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Bobbles, and as you know, I recently did a button tutorial where I made flowers out of buttons, and I did a whole bunch of different ones, and if you didn't see that video, it's one of my more recent videos, but I just had fun stacking all kinds of different buttons and making flowers. Now on all of these, except for these last couple, I doubled the wire. Now on these I did simple one wire because some of the holes in the salt and pepper shakers are too small for double. So I did do a few that were single. But I want to do something kind of a little fun. So I decided to do a few where I did a curly Q wire. And all I did was utilize Where'd it go? I utilized a knitting needle. Most crafters, even if you don't knit, have some kind of a knitting needle or long, thin, something like a, I've got a few sticks that my husband cut me out of plastic that are round, but I prefer to use a knitting needle because they taper at the end and it makes it easier to pull it off. And I did this one with the browns and the bronzes and I did this one where I put a glass vintage bead on the end or button on the end and I did the curly cue. Well I told you I wanted to do one more uh, I wanted to do at least one or two more fun things so I decided to use felt and sequins and beads. So this one here I did flowered sequins with a little drop bead which is different than a seed bead because it's round with kind of a uh, almost looks like a button shank on the bottom like this that you can put your um, thread through and so I made this one with the felt and I did the curly cue and I did this one where I did sequins and bugle beads in a circle and then I did this one where I used a square and kind of did like almost a leaf type effect and you could do this square in any color. I just happened to have these green squares cut out from years and years ago and decided it would be fun to use them. So, and I used pink and a uh, pearlescent and again. So I thought I'd show you how I do that and um, this will be a pretty short video because it's just a very simple project and I just take like I did on the other ones and I put the first and I only do like two uh, buttons on top of the felt. I don't want to make them too thick. I suppose you could but I think it would take away from what you're trying to do with the felt. Now this one's ultra long and you can do them whatever length you want and I'm not going to tell you what size to cut it because honestly I don't measure. I just cut whatever I want. This one I could make more curly and maybe not stretch out as much as I did some of these. Now, once you figure it out where you want to do it, you just take your needle. And I got a big thick needle. And then I went through the felt and made a hole and kind of enlarged it a little bit. And then put the wire through. It still will catch a little bit, even with the hole, because the wire is sharp. So it went through. Then you kind of see where you want the other wire to go through. Now on this one I might be able to push it through and I was. Okay and then you kind of just center it. Now this is just bugle beads nothing else. I did red glitter felt with bugle beads and just like on the buttons I cut this a little long. You go on back and just hold it the felt really tight and twist it a couple of times like that and then you're just going to cut that excess off. And then I take my pliers and I kind of get in there and just kind of tuck that wire in so it doesn't poke or hurt me. Then you just take your knitting needle and you can do it as tight or as loose as you want. Like if you want to make this a really tight curly cue, then you can do this. And I'll show you as I'm doing it. See? Make it really tight. Kind of tuck it around the bottom of the felt and you can do 
just a really tight curly cue. On some of them I do them really tight like this. On some of them I wind them very loosely down the knitting needle. And don't worry about it being perfect because when you pull it off you're going to be opening it a little bit. So then you just pull it off the end of the knitting needle and it'll be like this. Then you're just going to pull it out as long as you want it. And then how do you get it onto here? You just wind it in. It literally winds in to the, just kind of turn it and it'll go right into your, into your uh, shaker. And then you can just wind each one in. You can leave a little straight end if you want and just, you know, wind it in. I think a whole bouquet of these uh, felt ones would be really cute. Normally I would have done that for you, but I reason you haven't seen much of me is this is probably the first day I've felt halfway decent. For some reason allergy season this year really got me. I have a very bad reaction to the pecan trees. Now if it's going to be too long, you can snip off a little bit of the curly cue. See? Like this one would be way too long. Um, I'm allergic to pecans. Uh, the flower on a pecan is called a catkin. And it's like a long skinny thing that hangs down and it's like little tiny granules is the only way to explain it. And when they bloom, they about kill me. Every year, it's miserable. Well this year something else got me. I'm not exactly sure what. This one's a little long too. And this allergy season was much more brutal because I don't normally have sinus issues and when I do they're very minor. Okay, you gotta be when you're doing this curly cue thing, the only problem is sometimes they want to catch on each other. So you gotta go kind of go slowly and steadily. Anyway, you can get them all in there, and then you have a nice little bouquet of the hold on. Of the uh, and you don't have to do a curly cue. You can do a straight uh, wire. You don't have to do that. I was just showing you something else you could do. Um, anyway, so this year about killed me. I have had so much. First, my left side, all my teeth on that side hurt. It hurt to eat. It was cold and, and hot sensitive. I could barely eat, although it didn't stop me from eating. Now it's over on the other side on my bad eye, putting pressure so that light hurts my eye. And um, so I haven't really wanted to do a whole lot for a while. I haven't even been talking much on the phone, to be honest with you. I've just been pretty, I haven't been texting my friends. I've just kind of, I'll be honest, sitting on front of the TV watching YouTube is about all I've been doing lately. And, and my housework. But um, I'm feeling a little better today. The catkins are finally falling. I think they're about done. I think I have about a week and I'll feel pretty good. But this is a lot of fun because you can... Just take your seeds and seed beads and sequins and do a little bit of anything. Like this one, I just chased the bugle beads around the end. Now this one, I'm going to show you how to do this technique in another video. But I took bugle beads and sequins, which you can see what I did. I came up through the bugle bead, went down through the bugle, the beat next sequin, came up, put another bugle bead and went on. But I'll show you how to do it in an ornament. I'll do this in my next ornament and show you how to do it. This one's just a simple sequin in the corner and then three bugle beads. And I just basically came up, went down, came up, went down. Then I went across the back, came up, and went down. And so there's a lot on the back. So you can't worry about what's on the back. There's going to be a lot of threads. This one, I have a tray of just a mess of sequins. And I just pulled off three of each of these flowers and then put the buttons in the middle on this one here. Sorry, I thought I was in fill under the camera and I wasn't. So I hope this isn't too bright. My husband put daylight uh, light bulbs in my studio. So above me and then I have the ring light next to me. But it was just another fun way. I'm going to try to come up with a couple more for you. But I, I wanted to at least get this one out for you because I thought this one was a lot of fun. And this is a twisty bugle bead. And all the bugle beads, well, these were vintage, but I tried to use some of the kind that you could buy. Like these here are from Hobby Lobby. And this isn't, but you can get a silver like that. 
I'm pretty sure you can get a green too. But if you have like random seed beads or sequins, you can do any kind of little design on here. And it's just a lot of fun. So to show you some of these again, if you didn't see that video, these are some of the regular button flowers I did. And then these are the ones with the felt. I do have a couple more up my sleeve and here to show you how you can use some of the fancier buttons. I got these at Hobby Lobby and these are some vintage. You can do great big ones and then I even have the tiniest little one. I didn't get any more done for this but I wanted to do some more. I took tiny little shirt kind of shirt buttons to make this tiny little one. These would be cute twisted too because this is a little bitty shaker. So anyway, I hope you like this and it gave you another idea. It's a way to use, I used all scrap. Every bit of felt I used on this was little pieces I have in my scrap felt box. And I just stamped circles. I'm blessed enough to have this and you can get these on eBay all the time. I think I paid 20 and it's a vintage Baker's um, circle cutter. So you got everything from teeny tiny to a great big one and I got it in this box for like $20 uh, a year or so ago on eBay. But there's a lot of circle cutters you can you can buy and certainly you can trace a circle on your felt as well. And it doesn't have to be perfect because let me tell you no matter how hard I try cutting out these circles, they weren't perfect at all. And I like my beadwork on this one really does suck. It's not good at all. I mean, I was trying for a certain look and I messed up. I did too straight at the end. But I, I'm going to show you what I do. Even if it's not perfect, it's okay. It's handmade. It doesn't have to be perfect. If I wanted it to be perfect, I could tear it out and redo it. But you know what? If this was in a big bouquet, no one would even notice. And if they do, oh well, you know. These are the beads I was telling you about. They are cute little drops that my sister-in-law gave me. And they look like a little round ball with a shank on the end. Like I said, just like on a button. And you just go through the shank and it puts a nice little bubble. And that's what I used on these. Let's see if I can get that one to show up for you. Get it behind my hand. But that's what I used on these was these round ball type. And I know there's a term for them. I don't know offhand. Now this one I just did the bugle beads around it. And this one I did kind of a corner edging. And you could do that on a circle too. Uh, there's no reason why you couldn't. So Anyway, I hope this gives you some ideas, and I'll be back with the other half of the jewelry stash tomorrow. i got to upload that video as well, but I'll have that up tomorrow. And I will be doing some more of these for you, because I think the buttons are a lot of fun, and I think most crafters have a bunch of buttons, or you might have your mom's or your grandma's buttons, and you want to make something special out of them to remember your loved one by. It's a great way to, and I do have a little bag of my mom's buttons and I may do that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I will be back really soon and I hope everyone is feeling good and being safe and healthy. We are doing good. Um, getting a little tired of being home, but it's just par for the course. And we'll be staying home for a little bit, even though you can go out a little bit in our town we're just still comfortable with uh, drive-through if we want food and coming home. Uh, we'll probably wait till the restaurants are um, getting back to normal in a month or two. But we have a pregnant daughter and we just want to keep it really safe because we do see her from time to time to help her out with stuff. So we're being a little overly cautious. But, you know, like I say with the beadwork, you got to do what's right for you. If you feel like getting out and doing what you want to do is the right thing to do, that's what you should do. Um, just take all the precautions you can to keep yourself safe and that's what we're doing but we're still going out a little bit we're going into the stores we wear a mask and some people don't and that's you know just just be careful that's all you can do 
Um, I am not certainly going to judge anybody for what they do. Um, this is a weird time, right? So we'll all just do what we have to do, be safe and healthy, and hopefully this will all be behind us soon because I'm looking forward to eventually getting out and finding new treasures to share with you. I just bought a GoPro and I was going to take you shopping with me and I haven't gotten to do it yet. So hopefully soon I'll be able to do that. But I will talk to you soon and thank you so much. I hope you'll hit the like button and like I said tomorrow's Friday I will have that other half of the video up for you tomorrow. And I thank you again, and I will talk to you sometime next week. I will try to do another video, whether it's buttons or something fun. I'll try to come up with something fun for you tomorrow or next week. Maybe an ornament that's uh, spring or Mother's Day or something. Oh, Mother's Day Sunday, isn't it? Isn't it funny how we lose track of time? Well, I guess I won't do Mother's Day, but I do have a couple cool Father's Day things to do for you. And the buttons are kind of a nice Mother's Day. But I do have a couple cool cookie cutters for Father's Day. So maybe that's what we'll do tomorrow or next week. We'll do something fun for Father's Day. All right. Well, I've rambled on long enough. I don't get to talk to people near enough, so I guess you're having to, to deal with me rambling. But hope I didn't offend anybody talking about going out because I really do support everybody's decision I don't judge anyone we all have to do what makes us feel the most comfortable and that's all there is to it and so I don't want to ever offend anybody so I if I did I apologize because that's not what, what my intent was but I'll be back soon bye